Hashem, that we're able to learn every day. And it's about learning we should have to base on English immediately. Should be a full name for all those that need. Um, it's okay, we announced yesterday. And um, also for our brethren in the Ukraine, we should be safe. Okay, we're starting from Yud Testament base, it's 19b. And the two dots, which is towards the top, Hateva Lechulen. It's a small dot. Hateva Lechulen, Vehusak Lechulen. The Mishnah said someone goes to the mish, the, the mikveh and has kavana that he's going to eat. Yeah. He has kavana that he's going to eat um, chulen. So he's not allowed to have miser because. The way it works is that there's levels. It goes by gra- by grades of like how pure he's he uh, he accepts himself to be. Mani must listen. Who's the author of this Mishnah that says that there's a difference between chulen and meiser? Mar says Rabbanan. He it's actually the Rabbanan. We had before. We had two days ago or yesterday. We had machlekes between Reb Meir and the Chachamim. Anyone that goes to the mikveh. That required to go to the Mikdash every seifrim, so he would only make kodesh tamei. He would make truma invalid, and he would be permissible for chulin and for meiser. Come say no, meiser is uh, is is going to be us. In other words, the different the, the difference between chulin and meiser that that uh, differentiation is only according to the rabban and not according to Reb Meir. So we, when we make a difference between chulen and meiser, mundane food and tithe, that difference in purity. So we say that's only according to the rabbis, not according to Reb Meir. Ema Seifa. Let's read a little bit further. Problem is, it says, Big the Amaretz, clothing of an Amaretz. Amaretz is, is um, literally means uh, people of the earth. Uh, it gets translated later on as uh, ignoramuses but <coughs> what it refers to here are people that don't keep their their um their food they, they don't keep themselves pure they're not careful with with laws of purity yeah the signs in the bathroom that say wash your hands before uh, serving food or something that's for the amaras <laughs> that's uh they're not they're not so careful so um Big the Amaretz is Medjus Leprusha. Their clothing is considered Medjus. Medjus is, is something that's um, trodden upon by Yezav. Becomes a very high level of, t- a very um, severe Tama. Uh, it becomes an Avatama, that if it touches a person, it becomes Tami. So in other words, the clothing of a Amaretz is that severe that it could make a person Tami, make a, someone else Tami. Um, Big day Prushim is Medjus like Chuma. But someone that's a, the Prushim, those are the people that, that are called the Chaver. They do keep their food uh, pure. They do keep everything. They don't need that sign in the, in the bathroom and all of that. They're very careful with, with cleanliness and purity. So, But nevertheless, their clothing is considered a Medjus for Eichle Truma, for people that have a higher level of purity because they eat the Truma, which is the gifts to the Kohen. But the problem is that we missed out those that eat miser. We jumped from chulen to truma. According to the chachamim, there should be chulen, people that keep their food pure for chulen. It's a, it's measures for eichle miser. People that are eichle miser that eat the tithe, their clothing is medrus is tame for Eichle Chuma, but we skip that level. Why do we skip that level? Because there's one opinion that doesn't hold of that distinction. And which opinion is that? It's Reb Meir. Problem is, is at the beginning of the Mishnah, we said that we're following the Rabbana and that there is a distinction. Now we read a little further and we're following the opinion that there's no distinction. So Asam le Reb Meir, da mechulun ha-maisa ka-dadi ninu. Follows Reb Meir that says, chulun ha-maisa are equal. Reisher, Rabbana, and Vesef, Reb Meir. You have one Mishnah. Rabbi Yudha Nasi takes different opinions, collects them together, puts them together as if it's the same. Umar says, in, that happens sometimes. Reisha Rabbana Vesefer Reb Meir. The Rebbe would do that. He would collect the Mishnayas statements from here, and it didn't always match. Ravacha 
Ada Masni Lav Besefer Chamesh Mal Simukla Kulukar Abana. Pavacha Barada had a different Mishnah, a different version of the Mishnah, and he had five levels in the Sefer. Now those five levels would go like this: that the lowest level is Chulin, the next level is Maisa, the next level is Truma, the next level is Kaidish, the next level is Chatas. Those five levels of mundane tithe, the uh, gift to the Kohen, the sacrifice, and then the paraduma, the red heifer, those five levels is actually listed in the Mishnah. This person's clothing is tummy for this. This person's clothing is tummy for that. <clears throat> if that's the case, there's a distinction between mundane food and tithe, so then it would fit also with the Rabbanon. Amar Rav Mari Shmamina, Rav Mari says, we learned from this, Here's the interesting point. There are people that keep their food, all their food, they keep it tar. Even regular food, <clears throat> they keep it to the highest level. Now, the thing is that when it comes to purity, so regular mundane food could become a rishon or a sheni. That means is that something, uh, first level or second level, something that touched a sheretz becomes a rishon. If that item, that utensil, a spoon that touched the sheretz now touches food, that food becomes a sheni. If that food touches other food, it's finished. It doesn't, it doesn't continue. Doesn't continue to stop. So it can't contaminate anything else. It only reaches that level. However, if that food touched truma, uh, then it becomes the truma becomes uh, puzzle. The truma has a shlishi. If that truma touches other truma, nothing. It only reaches a shlishi, a third level. It doesn't go further. But if that truma touches kaidesh, it becomes a ravi. It does become tummy, uh, not tummy, puzzle. So even though it could not have contaminated. Uh, it could not have contaminated mundane food, can still con continue on to truma, can still continue on to kodesh, an extra level. So let's say someone keeps his food, his mundane food, to the level of kodesh. He keeps it, uh, he keeps it that pure that it's at that level. Does it really work like that? Does his extra stringency give it the level of? Of such of such uh, purity, because he's keeping it to that level. It's considered kaidish, and it goes to the fourth level of impurity if if uh, if that's what happened. Now it's all it's interesting because this is just one individual's uh, stringency, but it turns out that it's not just one individual stringency. There was a whole group of people that would do this, and these laws are relevant. So we're asking, according to this, um, some people would look at this like, you know, like if you keep Chol Yisrael, the Yekelim, uh, da, 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 whatever, you know, maybe Chol Yisrael isn't such Allah anyway. So uh, why are you making such a big deal? But it turns out that no, um, forget the Chol Yisrael, Marshall. Let's go back to the uh, to Chulin, Shinasu, Altar, Sakaydash. It turns out, no, this was a real law. The question is, what level does it get? So, Gmar says, Me, my. We, we get what you just said, that it, it's considered to that strict level of purity, as if it's kaidash, even though it's not, as if it's a sacrifice. But where did you get that from? Me, like Tani Bumaila. See, when we were giving these lists of the, this wow. level of purity is considered tummy for the next level of purity. That level of purity is tummy for the next, for the higher level of purity. You didn't mention that Chulin Shanasu Al Taras Kaidash was a different level. You could have said that Chulin Shanasu Al Taras Kaidash is considered tummy for actual Kaidash or something like that. You didn't mention that. Why not? It must be because it's not a different level. It must be it's the same level. You don't have a real proof for that. That's not, that's, that's not a very strong, um, it's not a strong proof. 
because it could be that it's really considered the level of truma, which is a level down. So why didn't you say that as a separate level? Because we said truma, we already said that level. We're only listing like um, um, brackets of uh, in the which bracketed it, and it uh, goes under one of the other brackets that we mentioned. The Tanan or the Tanya, Chulun Shnaso Al Tarsa Kedesh Sharein Kechulun. We even have a brisa clearly. It says that it's Chulun, for mundane food that's kept to a strict level of purity, is not really on that level. It only goes to a level of one and two of impurity. It doesn't go to three and four. It's not really kaid, it's not really a sacrificial uh, food. You just consider it, you're just making it um, in your mind, you're considering it like that. Rabbalah Zabar Tzadaka Yimahari and Kachuma, he says, no, it goes to the third level. Because it's considered Chuma. But we don't say that it becomes uh, becomes Kaidash. It's a conclusion of the fact that basically meant these people, just like as if they wouldn't allow their mice to get in the lab, they're very yeah, yeah, but it's more than that. They didn't even allow the regular food to get tummy with the ravi. Well, food would become tummy. They they you wouldn't care about it if it was a ravi because the ravi couldn't make it from a tummy. Right, a shlishi, but they wouldn't even let it become tummy with the shlishi because they considered it. Truma tummy, but shlishi can't make truma tummy. A shlishi could make. I know. Okay, shlishi so can if, make uh, if it was truma, then it could become a tummy as a shlishi. Right. And it, which could make a... Which, that's it. That, which that could make kaidesh tummy, a, a puzzle. Kaidesh goes to... Uh, no, no, uh, kaidesh no. goes to... But I understand what you're saying. They wouldn't allow any of their food to become a shlishi. This way, they're always in that mindset because shuma could become a shlishi. Yeah. Let me say kaidesh goes to ravi. When did you... Did I miss that? Yeah, yeah I thought that's what we learned. Just explain that... That is the rule review. But okay, the idea is that they treated all of their food like truma food, and just as if they would be careful mm -hmm. with truma food, they would be careful with their regular appetite. Right, right. But here we're dealing with kaidesh now, so it's like one level more. And kaidesh is, is a review. Okay. What's the root of kaidesh in truma? Kaidesh means that it's a sacrifice, and truma just means so a gift to the kain. Yeah, it actually is a carbon. So carbon, a carbon, uh, yeah. So they're keeping their chulin to a very high level, but nevertheless, according to the Bryce, it doesn't, it's not really at that level. Elami Seifa, so what's our support for this? We, we quote the Seifa, the, the end of the Mishnah. We, in the end of the Mishnah, we said, Yesi ben Yezer hayachasid shabakuna. He was this pious kayan. In his cloth, his, uh, his handkerchief, his medrash l'kaydash, was considered tamay for, for kaydash. Okay, so far no proof. Yechanan ben Gudgaida haya echal al tars kaidish kal yamav. Yechanan ben Gudgaida, we said, was a kayan, right? And he he kept everything pure all his days. Vaisa mitpachta medris lachatas. And his would was considered a medris, was considered tame for the paraduma. Lachatas in lachaydish lai. Means it's only for, for uh, chatas, but not for kaidish. For Kaidash, it wouldn't be tummy. Why not? Why wouldn't his food be considered tummy for Kaidash? It was just chulin. The answer is because it was on the level of Kaidash. Even chulin that's kept to that level is considered that level. That's the proof. Alma Kasavar, Chulin Shinas, Al Tarsa Kaidash, Kaidash Tam. It's considered that level, even though it's just kept to it. It's not really it. Okay. Yeah, I guess the way to. Um... What were some ways that food that was not used for truma or not used for a carbon would become tummy? So, if let's say there was a, a woman, Nida, a Nida, but what were some of them? Um, if the man was tummy mm -hmm. or if the area wasn't cleaned from shratzim, you know, shratzim are uh, the. Creatures uh, that the uh, creatures, uh, like sheep, yeah. kind of no, no oh, just um, like a, a mouse, or a oh, lizard, okay. or oh, kind of things that would be in the courtyard. Then. Oh, 
Uh -huh. Is there eight people or is it eight? There's eight, eight of them. Right. Oh. Yeah. I guess a way of imagining this would be um, just cleaning the feet. <laughs> well, Lord, you, you, want sure, you, know, you want to make sure actually not to clean your feet because as long as it never gets wet, you don't have to worry about it. There's sometimes there's people that they say, oh, my house is part of, I am just a vegan or whatever. So, you know, so you think everything is safe, but it turns out that the knife that they used was uh, a flashic knife. They cut something sharp. They cut on, you know, do you assume just because it, it's not relevant, when things aren't relevant, perfectly relevant, do they still have the same, the same status of, uh, it's not really Kaidash. You know what I'm saying? It's Chulan, Shinas, Valtarsa, Kaidash. Do we really give it the same status as Kaidash that all of those things should apply? But ultimately, just means that these people look stricter, therefore they can be trusted more. Okay. That's all. I don't think. I don't think the food is any holier. The food is not holier, but they're not. They're not that maybe there's a problem. Uh -huh. No, but is this food pure enough that if I mix it with other kaidash, it's really that pure? Well, why would we care? We're, we're not concerned about purity. We're concerned about impurity. I, I understand. No, but food. I can't. But I have to keep my Kaidish food pure to the to the highest level. Right. This guy says that his chulin is kept to that level. Is it really kept to that level? He didn't have any Kaidish around. So is it really that relevant when he doesn't have it around? Anyway. Okay. Amr Abyanison ben Alasar, Naflama Farte, Amen Rabyanison ben Alasar says the following If someone's for shawl is. Um, Whatever he has, his scarf falls off him. Amal Khaveri Tinali tells his friend, oh, pass it over. His friend gives it over to him. Tameya, it's considered Tame. He was always Makbit, but when it fell off, he lost his concentration about it. And then we don't know. Amar Rabyanasan bin Amram Neskalfulu Kalim Shal Shabbas Bikalim Shalchal Balavshan. Rabyanasan bin Amram says that if a person by mistake put on his weekday clothes, nitmu. So his, his uh, Shabbos clothes become, are, are considered tummy. He lost his concentration over his Shabbos clothes. You have these two ladies in the bathhouse, maybe in the mikvah. And they ended up putting on each other's clothes by mistake. So they walked out. It must have been dark. Can't imagine this really happening. And uh, <laughs> they end up walking out. Yeah, the, with uh, each other's clothing. The clothing is tummy. But they both went to the mikveh. They're both tar. Oh, the problem man. is, is that it seems that it, if you lose concentration, it becomes tummy. You have to always be aware of what's going on. Constant. Con Obviously, they put on clothes after the mikvah. You just need to. Hide. Well, yeah, live in the moment, always. <laughs> Any distraction means that you, that um, it's possible that it became tummy. <clears throat> See, this is something that could be you could uh, um, like for for Pesach, we're mocked like this. Let's say you have a bottle of oil. I don't know. So you open it uh, during the year. And then comes Pesach, you run out of oil. So, yeah, I have a bottle of oil. It's for sure Pesach. We, we would never use it for Pesach because we left it around. And during the year when we used it, we, didn't, we weren't thinking about Pesach. So if we were, were thinking about Pesach, then we would know to keep it Pesach. Thick. But we had no, it was Hanukkah when we opened it. And the Pesach like Hametz wasn't on our mind. So we have no... When you're not aware of it, you lose all, all that. You lose all. Uh, all so um, Kavana is important. Yeah, this is like it's. Yeah. It's we call it like mesiach das. That wasn't on your mind when you opened it. You don't know what's going on. Maybe this spritz that. It wasn't relevant because it wasn't relevant. So we're not. Okay, so that's what we just learned here. We learned several cases. The first case was. 
someone's scarf falls off, a shawl falls off, and the other person hands it to him. When it fell off, he lost his concentration. The second one was his clothing got mixed up, Shabbos and weekday clothing, so he loses concentration. And the third one was the women in the mikveh. She puts on the wrong clothing. He's lost concentration. So how long <clears throat> must you have concentration for? Over here, it seems even you lose for a second. It, oh, uh, it's considered tummy. Okay, so until you do the act, then you no longer need concentration. Concentration. Whenever you, if you, if you needed this clothing for whatever you were gonna do, then, you know, uh -huh. I don't know, make some food. Maskifla Rabbaishia. Rabbaishia says one second. One second. This is very strict. Ella meyata. He should like yade la sal. Person sticks his hand into a basket. Little paschitin. Wants to take out a loaf of bread. Also biyade pasayim. He gets the wrong loaf of bread. He takes the barley bread instead of the wheat bread. So, what are you going to tell me that the bread became tummy because you took the, the, wrong, the wrong thing? There was no, there was no tumma there. There was no tumma by any of these cases. Right. Just because you lose concentration for a second and you end up with the wrong one in your hand, everything becomes tummy. Maybe you'll say, yeah, that's how it works. But Tanya, it's not so because we have a brisa that says, <laughs> Someone is watching a barrel of wine. He thinks it's wine. He's keeping it pure. He opens it up. It's not really wine. It's oil. So it's still tar. He was guarding it the whole time. What are you telling me? That the clothing that for Shabbos and for weekday you mixed it up. What's the difference? He was guarding both of them. Why should you say that because he thought it was this and it turned out it was that, that it becomes tummy? Mm -hmm. The Gemara says, one second, one second. You think you have such a good support? It's not true. Look a little further. It says, It says it's tahar, but you're not allowed to eat it. Tar means that it won't make anything else tummy, but it's actually still tummy. See, you lost concentration. You thought it was wine, it turned out it was oil. Can't eat it. Am I? Why is it us to eat? I'm Rabbi Yermia. Talking about that the person said we lose the, the question here. We, we're saying the person said that I was making sure that it doesn't become tame in a way that it would make anything else tame. Mm -hmm. That's what we said that it's tar. But I wasn't making sure that it won't itself become tame. In other words, remember, there's the, the levels of, of impurity stop at a certain point. Can't keep right. continuing. It goes yeah. one to two to three, it and then it has three. to stop. Yeah. So if it's this, we were keeping it careful from a level one. But from a level two, we weren't careful. And therefore, this turned into a three. Let's say it was Truma. It turned into a three, but it can't make anything else tummy. Mm -hmm. So, okay, it's, you can't eat it. Yeah, that's the term. Uh, Tahar. Tahar means it's pure. Mm -hmm. Puzzle means that it becomes right. invalid, but it can't make anything else um, invalid. And tame means that it's it's in, it's okay. impure and it can make other things. Okay. The Gemara says, Miyakin it's Jerusalem Palga. Is there such a thing that people guard only halfway, but they protect it from touching this, but not from touching that? And they, they have such a it says in. Yeah, we actually have such a case. People are careful with half uh, with um, with such things. Well, Tanya, I'm sorry. With the, the Shabbos clothes and the weekday clothes, yeah. does it really matter who's watching it? Because your regular clothes are not paying. You're supposed to be separated, right? Right. This person, his weekday clothing were pure. His Shabbos clothing were pure. But the only way to keep your clothing pure is if you're always conscious of them, making sure I didn't touch this, I didn't touch that. Because he confused them, and for a moment he put on his weekday clothing, he thought they were the Shabbos There's clothing, doubt, so. the, the Shabbos clothing become impure. Yeah. At that moment, he lost concentration over them. But Tanya, we're, now we're going to prove that there is such a thing as protection from just partial, uh, uh, it, that it, from becoming Tame, but not from becoming Pasal. Paishit Yadi Basal. Someone puts his hand into a basket and the basket is full of figs. 
Basal al Ksefe, the basket's on his shoulder. And in the basket is a shovel. So the shovel and figs in there. He's only concentrating over the basket. He wasn't concentrating on the, uh, on the shovel. So a saltar of our The basket's pure, but the but the shovel is tummy. He wasn't thinking about it. He lost his concentration. Umar says a saltar. How could the basket be tar? Titma magrefa lasal. Why doesn't the magrefa, the shovel, make the basket impure? So it says, well, that's easy because ain't keli makabel keli, ain't ain't keli metama keli. One vessel can't make another vessel. You see, it works like this: that the vessel could become tame from an avatama, from a, a father of tama, from the first level. So mm -hmm. it goes, the vessel now becomes tummy, it becomes av is, is like before the first level. The vessel becomes the first level. But the, the second vessel. But it can't make another vessel tummy. Yeah. It can only, a vessel can only become tummy from an avatama. It, now it can only make food. So the Gemara asks, okay, well, a tummy masha basals, but at least it can make the food tummy, which is the... Uh, Ravina says, He claims like this. He says, I was careful that this Magrefa should not become Tame from a first level Tame. So the food on the, on the second Kaylee might be considered like the third Kaylee. So the food on the Kaylee. The food that's a attached to the keli is probably tame, but because the, the, this itself was hanging around in places that it could have become tame, but the keli cannot make other food tame. It never reached that level. Mikal maka in kasha, but one second. We have to go back and, and take a look at what, what are we dealing with here? We said that if someone loses concentration over some of his clothing, Switch this for that. The clothing become tummy. What's uh, how does that work? Void Maisev Rabba Baravu. Also, we have a question from Rabba Baravu. It's not so clear what the question is here, but but we'll read this through. Maisev Bisha Acha Shabbos Lefni Rabbi Shmuel. We have a story. A woman comes in front of Rabbi Shmuel. Vamer Lei Rabbi. She says, Rabbi Begedze Aragtiv Betara. I wove this cloth with perfect purity. But I didn't have intention to guard it. But nothing happened. I just didn't, I wasn't concentrating. But I'm telling you everything was pure. I just wasn't concentrating. However, Rabbi Shmuel started to ask her questions. So she says, Rabbi Nida Mashkimi Bechevel, there was, yeah, the other lady that was helping me was in Nida that was pulling the thread. So it turns out, he asked the question, turns out it wasn't really pure. I'm Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Shmuel commented, only if he has concentration is it going to be tar. If not, it's going to be tummy. Yeah. Yeah, this happens a lot. We have a story with a woman that comes in front of Rabbi Shmuel. I'm like, Rabbi, Mapazor, Akhtibitara, this mat, or uh, cloth. Mapa. Mapa is like a, 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 a napkin, tablecloth. I, I wove it in purity, but I wasn't careful to guard it. I didn't have intention. But Rabbi Shmuel asked her a few questions. I ended up, there was a, a, a piece of string that tore, and I tied it with my, with my mouth, and the spit, when she was tummy, got on it. And therefore, even though at that point, it wouldn't make the string tummy, but after it was woven, it becomes a baguette, it's considered a keli, it does make it tummy if it was still wet. So then uh, it turns out that the cloth was mamish tummy. Um, Rabbi Shmuel, the sages know what they're talking about. Okay. The question is what you see from this. 
could be what we see is that Rabbi Shmuel needed to get a proof out of her. That even though she didn't have concentration, if Rabbi Shmuel didn't get that answer, then could be it would have been tar. The question goes back on the ladies that switched their clothing, that they weren't guarding it every second because they switched it. But we see that there needed to be a conversation and, and an interrogation to make it tummy. And here we're, uh, we said that it's automatically tummy. Maybe that's what the Gemara is asking. Are we learning that it's the lack of concentration of the door or the need for concentration of the inspector? Because the inspector. We only, so it's not the fact that she was <laughs> raping, it's the fact that the rep Oh, no, I, I thought you meant, no, not, the, not that the person carrying the tumma wasn't concentrating. We're talking about the person carrying the pure things wasn't concentrating. So we don't know if he came in contact with. So if he wasn't concentrating the whole time, then we, we say, well, it uh, could be it became tummy while he wasn't paying attention. So he, because he switched, she switched clothing, he switched clothing. So we said that it was tummy. The other clothing for that moment. But we only know that because the, the, the diet was... Oh, okay, that's our question. That's our question. Turns out over here, it's only because he asked the questions it became tummy. But over there, we said it was automatically tummy. Okay, so Bishlam Allah Rabbi Lazarbat Sadak, Rabbi Lazarbat Sadak, his statement, he had the first statement here. He said that um, no, it wasn't the first statement. His was the clothing, the, the two women's clothing in the uh, in the in the mikvah. They switched the clothing. Is that why and the attendant in the woman's mikvah is to make sure that she's uh, no chatzitza, there's no um, interruption, you know, anything on the skin that could be a problem, and also that she goes under. Sometimes the hair could float. It doesn't, the hair also has to go, and that's why they have an attendant. <coughs> so, Bishlemelah Rabbi Lazarbet said, Kalachas Vach Zemer Schaberti Yesh Zamar, it's Moschadai to me, Mina. You see, if the other one, if each one thought that these women switched their clothing, it could be that they were watching the other one also. The problem is, is that they didn't watch the other one because they said they each thought they were wearing their own clothing, but they were together. But each one said, I wasn't paying attention to the other one because she was an Amaret. Turn out it. She wasn't Amaretz, but she thought that this is the wife of an Amaretz, and the clothing is anyways tummy. You don't have to watch. Don't worry about her. She's a, a wife of an Amaretz. So if that's the case, then she was, clearly wasn't paying attention to keeping the other woman uh, that's wearing the clothing tar because that was pointless because she's a uh, she's an Aisha Amaretz. Now, as if she would have been a, a Aisha Schaver, then we would have considered it pure, even though they switched. Okay. His, his Shabbos clothes, he's more careful with than his weekday clothes. So he thought it was a Shabbos clothes. So, so he would have been strict. Um, no, what happened was, what happened was, it was the opposite. He put on his, his Shabbos clothes thinking it's his weekday clothes. That's why it was tummy. Yeah. And then, okay, that's how we're explaining what's happening here. The only like, that was to track the clothing. So, so distracted. Oh. What happened with Rabbi Yenison ben Elazar is he says, Pass me my shawl. And the guy gives it to him. And we say, oh, it's become stomach. Problem is, why is it tummy? He was watching it. And it's his shawl. Why did it become tummy just when the person hands it to him? Rabbi Yechanan says a person doesn't watch anything that's in his friend's hands. He, he doesn't. Uh, the other guy's holding it. He doesn't uh, follow it. He doesn't watch it. But Tanya, we have a Bryce that says like this. 
Reisha Yechamar of a pile of Tunitares. Let's say he has his donkeys and his workers are have this this um, um, shipment of pure things, barrels of wine or whatever. And Avabi Shiflag Mem Yosemi Mill, even though he's distant from the workers at the level, at the distance of a mill, which is 2000 Amas, Taresev Tahiris, they're still pure. But if he says, You guys go, I'll come later, I'll come after, then Kivin Shin Salmain of Meam, Taresev Tameas, we consider it all Tameh. Maishna Resha, Maishna Seif, what's the difference when he tells them? That he doesn't tell him anything, or if he tells him, I'm coming later. Well, said the Reisha is where he put his workers to the mikf- in the mikvah before they started to make sure nothing becomes tummy. Does he So maybe in the Seifa also put them in the mikvah. It says, Einamaretz Makbid al Maga Chaveret. An Amaretz is not careful with what his friend touches. The workers are Amiyaret. Amiyaret is just someone outside of. Uh, it's not. Right. No, an Amiyaret is anyone that's not um, in this group of people that keep their food pure. Oh. Yeah. They're not part of the club. <laughs> so, Yahachi Reisha Nami, if that's the case, then in the ratio would be the same thing. It says, Bibalam Darachakalasan. Okay, the answer is that the difference between the two cases is in the first case, he could, the owner could always appear and surprise the uh, the workers. So that's why they're going to be careful. Make sure it doesn't become tummy. Yachi safe and nami. In the safe also, maybe the owner can always appear. And we said, I'll show up later, but maybe he can always appear. Once he tells them that you go and I'll come later, they already know that they're safe. And then they don't have to be careful. And that's the problem. Hajalachim darshan. And they're okay that we start the next um, the next parak. Yeah, this is the last parak of um, of the of the uh, Mayad. It's because the drivers know about Esav and Yaakov, and Yaakov says, "Oh, yeah, I'll see you there." Chaimer b'kaidash mi b'tshuma. The first statement here is quite obvious that when there are items that are sacri- sacrificial meat and all of that, it's more strict than truma, which is a gift to the Kohen. But what specifically? So the Gemara, the Mishnah explains. When it comes to truma, let's say I have a large bowl that's tame, and I have some spoons that are tame, and I need to put them in the mikveh. So I can put the spoons in the bowl, put them all in the mikveh, and because the outer bowl is going to the mikveh, the spoons that are in it, the mikveh works for them as well. But I can't do that, but I can't do that for Kaidish. Yeah, Rashi points out that it was, both of them were tame. It's, uh, the problem is it's, it looks like you're being taival inside a keli. You have to be taival in the mikveh, not in a keli. It's well, it's considered a, a keli. I don't know if it's modern science. I think it's like an actual problem, but for we don't say it's a problem for for truma. I mean, we have these like these uh, you know, the baskets. baskets that people drop in, right? Yeah. So that would only work um, according to this if if it's actually tame. The basket needs to be tame, and that needs to. But here, yeah, maybe it's not considered a keli because the water goes through it. Maybe that's the chart. Okay. The next thing is achirayim. If there's other parts of the vessel that are used for other things, there's the back of the vessel that maybe does other things. There's the inside of the vessel. There's the um, the handles, the grip. Those are considered separate vessels when it comes to chuma. So if those become tummy, the entire vessel doesn't become tummy. Avalei but by you, by uh, by something from a carbon, for those types of utensils. So you touch it uh, with tuma, the whole thing becomes tummy. Hanaisi esamedris, someone that carries something that's very tummy, it was like something that was tread upon by a by a, a zav. Let's say his shoe. So naisi esatuma. At the same time, you can carry tuma. 
carrying the medrus. Why doesn't it make him tummy? I think maybe only if he sits on it. On a gate, no. He's allowed to carry chum at the same time, and we're not concerned that it touched. Avalayas a kaidash, but he can't carry the kaidash. You have to see in the Gemara how they're going to explain this. Yeah. Mino. Yeah. Big day Eichle Chuma Medjus the Why would that not be a problem? It sounds like a problem. No, he should make, make him tummy. It's, uh, well, it's, it's considered an avatama. Right? Yeah, the, the shoes, shoes are avatama. He becomes a Rishan. How's he allowed to touch Chuma? Maybe he's not touching it. But you have to say he's not really touching the Chuma. That's what we're saying. He's not touching the chuma. He's carrying the chuma without touching it. Okay. Um, the clothing of a of people that eat chuma is considered tummy for people that eat carbonus. Like we said, that there's uh, grades of levels of purity. Like midas akedish midas chuma. Kedish is different than chuma. How does that work? Shabakedish mater umangiv. Let's say you have a vessel that's made out of different parts. So when it comes, comes to Kaidish, you have to untie every part, take it apart completely, and tie each piece separately. When it comes to Truma, it's exactly the opposite. You put the, the Kaili together, you tie it all together, and you tie it as it is. That's different. Kaila Managmarim Batara. A vessel that was completed in a state of purity. You still have to put it in the mikveh if you're going to want to use it for a carbon. But you don't have to put it in the mikveh for, for truma. And by the way, this is not the mikveh that we put the kalim in. We put kalim in the mikveh. We have a kalim mikveh. That's as if it we're converting them. But that doesn't have to do with tumma and tara. It's a different uh, thing. That's why if it was made by a Jew, you don't have to put it in the mikveh. All right. What happens is, if food is in a vessel and you touch that food, so if it's kaidish, all, all the food in the vessel becomes tummy. Yeah, it's as if we're, we're turning them into Jewish vessels. That's it. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting. Do they have like um actual kind of on Kalim sometimes? Yeah. 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 Pre tivald Pre tivald yeah. Yeah, they do that for the um for the hot water for the hot water urns because oh, yeah. when you tivald a hot water urn, yeah, it's difficult. It's fifty fifty if it's gonna work afterwards. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah. So uh, you, it's best you buy the one with the thing, and then it's then you, then it's still only seventy five. <laughs> no, they're good. All right, okay. So, <laughs> so by truma, it's not like this. If you touch truma in a vessel, let's say it's uh, peas or some some sort, you know. So only the ones you touch become tummy. Not the, it doesn't go to the whole thing, but by kaidas, everything becomes tummy. Haravi Bakaidish Pasal Bashlishi Bitchuma. Kaidish becomes invalid at the level of the fourth of fourth level. You see that? And uh Truma becomes invalid at the level of the third. Mm -hmm. so it means how many um, steps removed wow. from the original Tuma it could be. Bitchuma imnitmis achas miyadav chaver to taira by chuma. If one hand becomes tame by specific types of tuma. So then the, the, the other hand is tahar. You only have to wash one hand. But by Kedish, it's not so. You have to put both hands into the mikveh. Because one hand makes the other hand impure for sacrifices, sacrificial meat, but not for um, truma. Food that was never wet say fruits that never became wet you're allowed to eat them without washing your hands by truma but if they're wet then you have to wash your hands 
But by Kaidish, you still have to wash your hands, even if they didn't become wet. Now, someone that's in a, a, a extreme state of mourning, it's like right then when the when the person passed away, or someone that went to the mikvah already because of a, some sort of impurity, but he did not bring his sacrifice. So the following day, when he does bring his sacrifice, uh, he has to go to the mikvah before he eats the... Um, <coughs> The, the, the <coughs> sacrificial meat, avalayla truma, but for truma he doesn't have to go to go to the mikvah again. He already uh, he, for truma he can eat that evening. That's the first Mishnah in, in Shas that he, when do you say shema when the kayanim eat the truma because they went to the mikvah by day and they didn't bring their sacrifice yet. They're fine. They can still eat truma without going to the mikvah again. Okay, let's leave it over here. Thank you. Have a good day. Good day.